Welcome to unit 11 and 12. In unit 11, we look at the chain rule in higher dimensions. In unit 12, we look at tangent spaces and also directional derivative. So first of all, I'll remind you about the single variable chain rule, but it's something you should be familiar with. And what we do is we generalize this to higher dimensions. And the higher dimensional version looks like the one dimensional version. So what we have is a combination of two things. We have a combination, we combine a function of several variables with a curve. And what we get is the same formula here. <coughs> Just derivatives, the derivatives have changed. The derivative of f that's the gradient, so that's this derivative here has become a gradient. And then we have the velocity, what we have here is the g prime here. In, in that case, we have the velocity vector. Now let's assume we have an octopus here. The octopus decides to move around two circles. So the two circles are given here. So uh, one plus cosine t, one plus sine t, two plus sine t, cosine t. But then there is this third function, the function f of r of t, in this case gives you maybe something like the height or the temperature. The chain rule describes the change of f when you move along the curve r of t. So it is at the point 2, 1 and uh, if it goes along the first curve here, this curve here, the octopus has a rate of change of 11 and in this case it has a rate of change of 7. What, what we want to know is what is the gradient? What is the gradient at that point? That's the octopus problem. So the, the chain rule is an amazing rule and uh, it allows you also to do implicit differentiation. For example, let's take implicit differentiation, let's take x squared plus uh, y x to the fourth is equal to 2 and uh, <coughs> find uh, y prime at 1. So this is magic, we have a function y of x Right? So this defines implicitly a function y of x, but we have no idea what this function y of x is because we cannot solve for that, but we can still find this uh, y prime of y. In single variable calculus, you can actually derive from the chain rule. I just mentioned this here, for example, the product rule. You can derive from the chain rule in two dimensions and the quotient rule and the addition rule. That's the ring of power. So you disappear. Okay, unit, unit 12, we talk about tangent spaces, tangent lines, tangent planes. But first of all, there's a very important theorem which tells you that the gradient has an interpretation of being a vector perpendicular to the level surface or level curve. My gradient hero here, so all the, at all the points of the surface, we have drawn the, the gradient vector. That's extremely useful. Why is this useful? because we can immediately get the tangent line and the tangent plane. So for example, I have a problem here, beautiful surface, maybe I show it here. And uh, what we want to know is uh, the tangent plane at this point one, one, one. Now what we do is we just compute the gradient six. So this is 10. <clears throat> and finally, when we differentiate this is back to Z, we get two here, we get four here and we get zero, this is six. This is ABC. Now we have eight X plus 10 Y plus six Z is equal to D. How do, how do you find a constant D? You should know this. You get that constant. We have done that in the first, so first week. You get that constant by plugging in the point one, one, one. In this case, it's just 24. Also for tangent lines, Maybe I just uh, put that here, <coughs> that one, one is equal to, so two x, which is two, four y, two, four. So D is a constant, which you get by plugging in the point. You plug in the point one, one. So this is the tangent line. So finding tangent spaces of ta tangent lines, tangent planes is very, very simple if you know the gradient. <coughs> Don't think about linearization. Now, one of the important applications of the gradient is that you know in which direction the function increases most. Steepest ascent. If you're doing uh, machine learning, that's essentially the, the key for machine learning. You go in the direction of the gradient. You increase your 
value by going in the direction of the gradient. So we know exactly what the steepness is in the direction of the gradient. It's the length of the gradient. And since this is a unit vector, we always assume this is a unit vector here. Always when we look at directional derivative, that's in the name of directional derivative. We take that Gauche Schwartz uh, tells us this is just <coughs> smaller than equal than the gradient. But if we go in the direction of the gradient, we have we match this maximal steepness. That finishes kind of a big chunk already of the course. We will next week start with extremization. We will look at places where the function has critical points, where the gradient is zero. This is typically a maximum or minimum. It can also have saddle points and or even be more interesting. So we look at that next, next week. You have the exam tomorrow. Good luck. Uh,